Hey guys and gals, friends of YouTube, uh, Love to Fly Helis here. Um, I'm going to build myself a uh, ground hook to stick in the ground to hold my airplanes while I start the engines and stuff. Um, I actually went looking for the, the rounded hooks, but I got to thinking about it and I found these. They were like six bucks for a pair of them and this will give me plenty of height for different heights of airplanes. So uh, I've got these brackets. I've got uh, some quarter 20 bolts with lock nuts and quarter 20 washers, but these are specialty washers. They're bigger in diameter on the outside diameter, so it'll cover more surface. Uh, the steel bracket, and I've already drilled the holes in this. Uh, you're going to, if you do something like this, you're going to have to have carbide bits. I didn't have any carbide, and my bit just, it just eat it up. I ended up taking a Dremel and wallowing these three holes out. Uh, for these giant spike nails to go through into the ground. Um, so we're going to put this thing together here. Get these out. All the screws that come with it, you're not going to need it. These are made to mount on the wall in your garage. And the first thing I'm going to do is take this foam pipe wrap. I've got, I like the kind that has the, for this, that has the sticky stuff so you don't tear it, stretching it over this. So we're going to cut this to length with a pair of scissors. We'll lay that aside and what we'll do is stick this on here like this. And then we will pull the plastic loose so the tape will stick. Try not to pull my tape out of there. There we go. Now you just, uh, just push those together evenly and they will stick. They won't hardly ever come loose. I'm going to rotate the seam to the back. Get that off of there. And that way my uh, elevator stab will be pulling against this pad right here. Well, it's good and solid. It's not going to go anywhere. Let's do the other one. Open it up. And see how hard that would have been. To, if it was a solid piece, it'd be hard to slip over this big end. So that's why I like this piece with the, the tape on it. So now take the covering off again. Line those up and squeeze them together. Okay, now we have those. Now, what we're going to do is take these bolts, and this is kind of soft metal right here, so I'm going to put a washer on top. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to drill these out right quick. Hang on just a second. Let me find out how to drill this. That don't work. I'll drill out. My battery. I love this little Black and Decker uh, drill. It's I think it's a it's a 12 volt lithium battery. You can leave this battery on the charger 24/7. It, matter of fact, the book says to leave it on the charger all the time, but it'll run forever on a charge. But it's small enough and lightweight, but it's got the drill mode, the clutch. I love this dude for a little bit bigger stuff like this. I, I like my little Ryobi one for smaller stuff. Now, what I'm going to do, get me a paper towel here, and I'm going to lay the paper towel under this block so I can catch my metal shrapnel. This is where I work on my planes right here, so I don't want any little metal shrapnel that I miss in the, in the towel and lay it on my covering and tear a hole in it or scratch it, so we're going to put this on here. better grip. Tighten that down. May have to use my drill press. Here we go. Now, that fits perfect. We only have to do that one because we're not using both holes. Get hung up in there. Get a reverse going here. 
try this again. Oh goodness. This is soft metal so it's catching. Let's try it this direction. There we go. Got it through there. I'll make sure there's no burrs or anything. In the bottom. Well, it's going to be on that metal so it doesn't matter. Anyway, now I can just take my towel and fold it up and throw the shrapnel in the trash can without getting it all over my table. And I still want to double check it really good, but there's a few little pieces, but I'll vacuum it off. But anyway, done with that. Now, take our bracket and we will put bolt down. Well, actually, I want this from the bottom, so the head of this is on the ground. So we're going to come from the bottom. We're going to run that up through there. We're going to put another washer on it and then a lock nut. So if I can get it started straight here. There we go. Get the screwdriver and uh, a socket set. Well, where's it in? Here it is. Get my little socket and ratchet out. Um, that's it. Nope. Yanker. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to put my socket on this side, I'm going to put my screwdriver over here, and I'm going to just snug this down. I want the arm to move, I don't want it completely tight, but I'm going to snug it down pretty good. Now, see, I can still twist that, but yet it's snug. With that lock nut on there, it shouldn't ever come loose. Okay, let's do the other side, washer. To the bottom and tight. All right, the socket on there, screwdriver. Okay, well, I didn't, we didn't get it tight enough. Hang on. There we're getting there. Okay, now those wheels swivel, and the reason I want them to swivel is because I fly everything from 40 size, mostly 46 size. I have a couple, one or two 25 size, but I fly everything from 46 to 50 cc. So I can spread this out just a little bit, put my tail, drop my tail down through here, and the stab will fit, and then it'll fit up against the fuselage. Okay, then we'll take, when I get to the field, I will take this bracket, and I've drilled out three holes, the two outside ones, and one in the middle. There's another one, but I didn't figure I needed four nails. Most people just use two. When I get to the field, I will take a hammer, drive these spikes, three of them, into the ground, and I will hold that. Uh, you know, we have solid ground here in Arkansas, so if you're on a beach or something, no, it's not going to work, but in the sand. But anyway, very simple build. Uh, I think it cost me... Well, these were six dollars, two two bucks for that, and the nails were seventy cents a piece. Bag of bolts and washers, so not very much. Probably ten, twelve dollars, and ten, eleven dollars. Uh, way cheaper than the twenty five, thirty, fifty dollar ones you have to buy. So, and I, this one will work just fine. And then instead of some of the, some people make these to where these fall down, I didn't go that trouble. But what I can do is just pull them out to the side. And my smaller planes will fit through there. If it's a 50 cc or whatever, I'll just pick it up and set it over the top of it. This will anchor my plane down while starting the engine, which is very, very important. If you don't have somebody at the field with you and you don't have, or you if you are at the field and you don't have one of these anchors, by all means have somebody stand with their legs or feet at the stab on that airplane. I, I just cringe when I see somebody over there starting a plane by themselves. All it takes is a little slip, hit a throttle stick or something, and uh, you're done. We have a guy in a club over in a uh, nearby club about four years ago. He was starting his plane, and somehow he managed to hit the stick. It, it throttled up. Anyway, it came toward him. He he leaned back, but he it just reflex. He stuck his hands out. Well, it ripped his hands open. He's had three or four surgeries now, and he still doesn't have full mobility of his hands. He's, he's done. He's never flying again, RC. Uh, so it's very, very dangerous. These props will 
they're like razor blades, especially those ACP props. I, I absolutely hate those things. I will not use one except on a little electric, and they're dangerous but because they're so sharp. Any of them will get you. Wood prop, uh, master air screw plastic will get you, but the APCs are the worst. They're one of the best performing props out there, but they're the most dangerous. So anyway, there's my ground hook, and uh, I think we're going to get to fly tomorrow. So hopefully we'll take this out, and if my theory works right, uh, this will work. If not, I'll build something else, but uh, we'll see how it does, and I'll do a little little video on it tomorrow too. So, All right, now we're at the field. We're going to test out my new bracket that I made. Byron's assisting me. He's mounting it, driving the tacks in the ground. We'll see how she works. Stakes being so long, there may be a Chinaman on the other side squeezing. Well, could be. Might have, might have poked him in the him back or something. I, I, wanted, just, I didn't want it coming loose, that's I think for sure. I just found a root. Oh boy, I wondered about that. Let me twist it a little. I don't want there you go. Nope, oh. still there, I can feel it. I bet that's what it is too, a root. Yeah, we get it in that, we'll never get it out. Uh-uh. Move it. Pull the whole thing up and move it over a little bit. Maybe right. we'll get lucky. We're underneath this tree here and there's a lot of tree roots in the ground. So. Got one. One down, the middle one down. Feels like it's gonna go. Got two. Oh, well, we get lucky on the third one. Oh, it's funny, one of the videos, I know how much it takes this uh -oh. thing to start. There's something right Another there. Another one? There's something. Yeah, oh, there you go. Okay. Well, did I? Yeah, yeah, there we go, good deal. Okay. All right, now set the tail of that plane in there and see what you think. <coughs> you can just raise it up. Gonna work? I believe that'll work. I believe it'll work. Awesome. All right, we'll fire this thing up here in a little bit and see if it holds it. <laughs> 